Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I want to talk about one of the most popular uh, kind of tools for managing modern IT infrastructure, and something that's really become kind of the backbone um, of the provisioning and maintenance of infrastructure. Um, and so, previously in the old world, um, infrastructure was provisioned manually, you know, through forms and and UIs. But now we have the concept of infrastructure as code, where instead of manually configuring things, every piece of uh, infrastructure that's created, whether it be a new application, a new server, a new user, is all done through code. Uh, many large organizations actually have a mandate that any the creation of any new object, any new infrastructure, has to be able to be done through code because it is so core and so critical to the modern business. So today, I want to talk about what infrastructure as code is, how infrastructure as code works, why it's become so popular, uh, and then round it off with some popular infrastructure as code tools that you can use uh, to start deploying your own infrastructure as code so you have an idea both of how it works and how to get started using it so you're well equipped for using it in your day job because that's what this channel is all about. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So the way infrastructure as code works, uh, and what, really what it is at the most basic level, is a practice of managing and provisioning computing infrastructure, such as servers, networks, databases, storage, through machine-readable scripts or definition files, rather than manual configuration or interactive GUI-based tools. Um, and it allows IT teams to deliver infrastructure and define infrastructure in code, which enables automation of that, version control, repeatability, um, you can just have a script that knows all the stack of compute resources you need to roll out for a new team and a use cases ready to go without needing to go through all the steps you might have previously done uh, to configure and create that. Um, and at its core, the kind of purpose of infrastructure's code is to eliminate human error and inconsistency in infrastructure management by ensuring that every deployment follows the same predefined configurations. Um, there's also a record of the configuration that was used. So you have a clear understanding of, hey, if something went wrong, if there was some difference uh, in it, the, your code versus the standard, you know exactly what that is and you have a visual representation and in code, uh, a record of what actually was changed. Um, and it also allows you to be, your infrastructure be deployed, modified, replicated with minimal manual intervention. So it eliminates a lot of load on a DevOps or platform team and makes it an essential component for modern DevOps and cloud native computing because it reduces so much that manual labor that you previously had to do to create new infrastructure. So now here I actually want to kind of show an example when I'm talking about how infrastructure's code works. Um, and IAC operates by using declarative or imperative programming approaches. Um, in the declarative approach, it defines the desired state of the infrastructure and lets the system figure out how to de deliver it. Um, and this is common in tools like Terraform and Kubernetes manifests. Um, and this is you know, something like, hey, a Terraform script that specifies the number and type of servers required without detailing the step-by-step -step creation process. Um, and now it looks something like this, you know, saying, hey, I just want to create a resource in AWS uh, subnet, internet gateway, whatever. Um, I don't care about the steps needed to actually create that. Uh, versus the imperative approach where it's exact commands, so you'd be writing out all the different AWS CLI commands needed to actually configure that infrastructure. Um, and this is used more in configuration management tools like Ansible, where each task is explicitly defined. Um, and this is something like a you know, Docker file script that sequentially installs and configures services on a server, you know, installs PyODBC drivers when that server starts up. Um, and those are all commands that you need to explicitly declare yourself. But regardless of the approach, there are a couple of common factors. You're always going to want to have things like version control layered in here. So storing those infrastructure definitions in Git or other repositories for tracking changes, um, using automation to integrate internet as code scripts or integrate <laughs> infrastructure as code scripts into CI CD pipelines for continuous integration and deployment. Um, and then also item potency, making sure that running the script multiple times results in the same infrastructure state. Um, so that's kind of the basics of how infrastructure code is actually delivered and how it's defined in, in, in reality. So now I want to talk about why internet is, or infrastructure as code has become so popular. Um, and there have been several factors that have kind of driven the widespread adoption of infrastructure as code. Number one has been the cloud rise of cloud computing adoption um, with the rise of cloud services like AWS, like Google Cloud, like Azure. Um, organizations need more scalable and repeatable methods to manage infrastructure um, and, 
Internet Infrastructure as Code simplifies cloud provisioning and ensures consistency across all your environments. Um, additionally, efficiency and speed. Um, so because inter Infrastructure as Code automates most of the infrastructure setup and reduces the time needed to configure servers and networks manually, saves you a ton of time as a network or platform engineer and is really useful in DevOps and CICD pipelines where rapid deployments are required so you don't have to have so much of a lag time between request and actual deployment. Um, also for consistency and standardization, manual configuration often leads to configuration drift where different environments uh, that you create over time often end up with slight variations. Um, and so Internet Infrastructure as Code ensures uniform infrastructure across all your environments uh, by making sure that any changes are recorded, processed, and then if they're actually allowed, propagated across all environments. Um, and then also cost reduction. By automating a lot of infrastructure management, uh, IAC reduces operational overhead. You, know, you, got, you need to have less engineers managing and doing the same job, minimizes downtime to misconfigurations, and also helps optimize resource usage. Um, and not only saving jobs or eliminating jobs, but also allowing those jobs to do more high level work and more impactful work rather than just spending a ton of their time doing super basic um, kind of just maintenance work. Um, additionally, disaster recovery and rollbacks um, with infrastructure as code, organizations can really quickly recreate their infrastructure from source code. So if anything goes wrong, you have a stack that you can really quickly redeploy onto another piece of infrastructure. Um, and that really will help you in disaster recovery, rollback strategies, um, scenarios where you just have a record of everything so that if something goes wrong, you know how to get all of that back up and running as quickly as possible and reduce that downtime. Um, and then finally, collaboration and version control. Uh, infrastructure as code enables infrastructure definitions to be stored in Git repositories, which then allows many different teams to collaborate, review changes in a uh, you know tracked and structured way, um, and then also track your modifications just like application code, just like any other piece of software. So now I want to talk about some of the most popular infrastructure as code tools out there um, and give you some of their kind of benefits, features, drawbacks to just round this off with an idea of, hey, what infrastructure as code tool is right for me? Because they're not all the same. Um, and starting off, you have Terraform, which is kind of the first one I would say most people think about when they think about infrastructure as code. Um, it is a declarative tool, so you just declare um, the steps um, and it figures out actually how to achieve it. So you say, hey, Terraform, deploy me a server. You don't need to have all the different commands written out there. Um, and infrastructure is defined using the HashiCorp configuration language, abbreviated to HCL. Um, it supports multi-cloud environments, uses a state file to track infrastructure changes. Um, it is primarily centered around cloud provisioning, really across any cloud. So AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, maybe Oracle if you're really unlucky, um, and primarily really used for deploying resources within those clouds. Then you also have AWS CloudFormation. Um, this is again a declarative type um, of infrastructure as, co as code management system. Um, and its my primary use case is automating uh, AWS resource creation, as you might imagine. It's a natively defined infrastructure as code tool for AWS environments. Um, you can either use JSON or YAML to define the infrastructure and then integrates really seamlessly with AWS services. So that's the example I showed you before. Makes it really easy to just say, hey, write me a create me a server and a couple lines of code and then have that be your infrastructure as code. Um, so really useful tool. Then you have Ansible. Um, this is, can be both imperative and declarative. Um, and this is done, this is built by Red Hat and it's specialized around kind of configuration management and automation. That's why you want to have more of that uh, imperative approach there. Um, and here it actually uses YAML based playbooks to define automation tasks. Um, and it's also agentless. So there's no additional software required to run on target machines. Um, and is really well suited for provisioning and application deployment. So the deployment of actually applications on top of infrastructure. Then you also have Chef. Um, so this is a configuration management from structure tool imperative. So uses a Ruby based DSL to define configurations manually um, and focuses on automation and enforcing policies across automation, which is infrastructure, which is possibly the reason why, you know, it's mainly it's got a more imperative approach. Then we also, you also have Puppet. Um, so this is again, a declarative type. Um, it's mainly used for configuration management and uses a domain specific language called DSL uh, for defining infrastructure and is suitable for really large scale infrastructure with very complex dependencies, has a lot of those that are able to be defined. So you not only 
find the infrastructure, but also the relationships between them. Um, you also have Pulumi, um, and this is declarative and imperative, and is meant for, you know, hey, infrastructure provisioning with general purpose languages. Uses languages like Python, Go, JavaScript instead of DSL, so a bit more approachable um, if you're a fan of one of the other languages. Um, and also supports multiple cloud providers. Um, but yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. Um, just really kind of going through infrastructure's code as a concept because it has really revolutionized IT infrastructure management, enabling you know just really high level automation, consistency, scalability, um, and eliminating manual configurations. Just a lot of kind of just annoying work that you would have had to do previously. Um, definitely not going away. Going to kind of only become more of a fundamental pro process. So. Definitely something that if you're entering the field of data engineering, get brushed up on, start to understand how this works um, and start to become an expert in it so you can get that job. Uh, but above all else, hope you enjoy this video. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Data guy out.